Welcome back to the channel, Two Stroke Turbo fans, where you just don't know what you're going to see on every one of the videos that I've produced over the years, uh, a couple thousand now. This is my shop dog, Stella, and she is avoiding the camera. She becomes very camera shy because I run the camera all the time. Do you want to say hi to the YouTube world out there, Stella? <laughs> you're famous, cute little puppy dog. So, this wouldn't be a two-stroke channel. You wouldn't be tuning in if it wasn't. It's everything two-stroke, right? So, every year about this time, mid-July, mid-August, hot part of the season here for Portland, Oregon, the water warms up to about 65, 70 degrees in the rivers. And we start thinking about going out, um, cooling off. It's going to be 100 degrees tomorrow and 105, I think, on Thursday. And that's hot. It's already hot according to the dog weather forecaster right here. So uh, this is a 440 CC, a 1983 jet ski, one of the early ones, a JS 440. Eh, the whole design and the power just isn't really up to it. It doesn't get used much. I've ridden it actually quite a bit, but that got the bug for these, which are 750s, and a, a later model hull design. These are 90, one's a 93 and one's a 94. I don't remember which is which. They're identical. Um, roughly 43 horsepower, 750 cc's, really strong. They go about 40 miles an hour, maybe faster, if you can get the jet to stick. They've got some upgrades on them. They're really fun. We don't get them out enough. Like I said, we have about a three week window every summer, and this is it. Um, it's all or nothing. Basically, it's 100 degrees and the water temperature comes up to 70. And then on Labor Day, they open up all the dams to release the water for the impending rains. And the water temperature drops 20 degrees overnight and nobody wants to go jet skiing, especially with these because you really get wet. These are stand-up jet skis, Kawasaki's, again, 1994, uh, 750SXs. I'm not sure. They're single carburetor and I forget the denomination between the two. I prefer the single carburetor. I think they have more torque. The dual carburetors have more power, but these are easier to tune. They're, they're plenty fun. Uh, they will wear you out. So what are we doing? We're looking down here, my dirty bilge. Uh, is that a bad word? Um, I'm not sure, but I cleaned it up a little bit for you guys, and we're doing some battery tech. If you remember, well, maybe you don't. I did a video on these guys a couple days ago, and I'm just bummed because I put a battery in them every year I put in one of these, this is the original battery. It's one of these little motorcycle batteries or moped batteries. Uh, what is it? A 14LA2 is what it says. You have to put the acid in or the water and charge it. And they last maybe a year. I don't even know how many amps these things are. They can't be more than 150, 200 amps max. So I'm tired of playing that game. I have put probably 10 of these batteries in these skis over the years because they go bad every year and you want to take them out you got to get a new battery and your constraint by the, the the box area is very tight i mean it's got to fit down in there the positive can't touch the engine case you can't put a normal size car battery in there the terminals come off the side um, but i think i found something so what i've got in there is a gel cell and i'll show you in just a second um, it barely fits i mean it barely fits it's tight the straps go on nice and tight. These skis get inverted pretty easily. You don't want your battery flopping around and the terminals touching the metal and catching fire in the middle of the river. That's awful. Um, I've never had that happen, but it could. Uh, it's actually hard to get this battery in. You got to tip it to the side, kind of twist it to get it around the bilge pump and where it needs to go. It just barely fits in the battery box up against the bottom of these um, Maybe an exhaust hose or something. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it's a water box hose right there. Just barely. That doesn't get hot, but it barely fits. And that is made for the sit-down jet skis. What do they call them? Wave runners. Yamaha wave runners from, uh, oh, from 87 to 08. So that's for the wave runners, all Kawasaki, Polaris, and ATV. So it covers a lot. They look like this. They're a gel cell, so they can be inverted. They're already pre-charged, and they're $69 on Amazon. They're probably made in China, but they have 390 cold cranking amps. 
uh, 19 amp hours. I'm thinking I'm going to get a couple years out of these. What I'm going to do this season is I'm going to pull it out and keep it on the trickle charger, and I can use it in the micro cars, which is fantastic. This other battery here is a U series. U series, yes. Uh, for a, it's called a U1 for the micro cars. This is what I go to. It's a basically a lawn and garden tractor battery, 300 cold cranking amps. Um, they last about five to seven years if you trickle them. Have this in the Messerschmitt, the Isetta, all the Subaru 360s. The Honda 600s take a bigger one. But this is a really common microcar battery. And what I wanted to do was use one of these in lieu of that. But there's, I couldn't, the, the size is just too big. This fits barely. You can see it's a little taller, but just enough smaller that it fits. And I'm very happy. So I'm going to put this battery in the other ski there and just listen to how this thing cranks up. So I'm gonna press the go button here on the top. Where is it? There's a green button. Oh, of course I say that, now it, there we go. My starter's got a little clicky clicky. It does it every now and then. Of course it does it right for the video. Uh, but fires it right up. These things need a lot of cold cranking amps to fire off the CD box to burn the oil and the gas mixture. I don't know why, but if you have a weak battery, they just will not start and they flood really easy and you're fighting it a lot. So I'm really happy to have a nice strong battery. I don't, I'm not sponsored by this company. I don't know if they'll last, but I think it's a great alternative for anybody else who has a stand-up ski like this that's looking for a performance battery. I may have found a hot ticket. At least I think I have. So we're going to take them out here in the next couple days and I'll let you, let you know how they work. I'm really trying to get my daughters to come with me. It'll be their first time alone on the jet skis. We'll see if that happens. But uh, I'm out for this video. I hope that helps somebody. Uh, there's not a lot of information out there on, on upsizing your battery uh, amperage or power for a jet ski like this. And I just want something that works. So again, sorry for the dirty build shot. And I hope I hope some I hope I help somebody with their battery on their jet ski. That's my my goal. So all right. Thanks a lot for watching. And yeah, these are two stroke.